Extra. Yeah. Don't let none stress y'all. No. Running, running through the mission. Huh? Make it hate a pay rendition. Put it down. So I know. So go, go. Him. Michael Phelps. Do the stroke. Do the quick sand. So we was talking about, you know, as we were talking about financials. Um, you mentioned in the book, Rich. Yeah. Rich. So I, I actually asked Dario if he's read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, for the people that have read the book out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So in the book, he talks about having his biological father, mm -hmm. who was part of the middle class. Yeah. And, you know, he worked in, in a school district, and he had, you know, decent money and a decent life financially. Yeah. But he was investing all his time into that mm -hmm. versus his best friend's dad, who was an entrepreneur. Yeah. Who had that, you know, instead of trading, you know, time for money, yeah. he was trading money for money, yeah. in a sense. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, the importance of having the rich dad, poor dad, where his poor dad was, yeah, he was middle class, he was making decent money, but his lifestyle just, it, it just wasn't there. Yeah. So, sometimes when we, when we talk about financial things... Like you were talking about earlier with the mental health and, you know, work, doing 20 showings one day and taking that next day off so you yeah. can basically regroup. Yeah. That's super important because if you think about the mental aspect of everything, it's so much more important than, example, I have X amount of dollars in my account and this and that. I mean, that's important mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Yeah. So I believe that Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like many other books out there, I'm pretty sure the book you're reading itself they have they have these cues where they show you that hey, this is just like baseball. And now yeah. back to baseball, this is ninety percent mental. Yeah, yeah, it is. If if your mentality isn't there, if your mental health isn't there, if you're not goal driven like you're saying, right? If you can't write things down and attack them and break that wall, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. And that's one thing that I always tell people: um, people set goals, but they don't write them down. Yes. Like, the, the, the best thing you could do is like write write down your goals, write down your aspirations, and you know have a the most important thing is having a time frame. Um, what makes a goal a goal is a, is an end date. So some people say I want to buy a house. Mm. Okay, buy one. So you know it's like yeah, so yeah, you gotta have a definite date. So it's like I want to buy a house by June 29th, twenty ninth, twenty twenty one. So now you you know by June 29th, twenty ninth, twenty twenty one, you gotta have everything in order. To, to buy that house. Yeah. So you, you start saving, which is, you know, you start you start out of putting money to the side. Like, I want to save $1,000 mm -hmm. every two weeks from this paycheck or every month. And you start putting it to the side. You start putting it to the side. And then by this time, I want to have this. Yeah. By this time, I want to have my credit. Yeah, you want to check your credit. Like you want to make sure your, your criteria, you, you yeah. have the yeah. criteria to meet whatever so, goal it is. So, you know, goals, you have to write them down. And um, like one of my lifetime goals is to just be able to, a lot of people say financial freedom and it's a tough number to judge because you could be financially free with a hundred dollars in your account yeah. if you don't have that many bills. Of course. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, so financial freedom is like a, a weird number. It's like a weird number to say, but like one of my, my aspirations and what a lot of people talk about is, you know, creating that and eliminating the rat race, like get out of the rat race. Get out of the and, rat and race. And it's creating that passive income. Mm -hmm. And you create passive income, you know, through um, real estate. Real estate, real estate yeah. is one of the biggest forms. Opening up businesses, but open up businesses that make sense and that you understand the business. Don't just open up a business to open up a business. Yeah. Like if you never play baseball, don't open up a baseball you academy play, yeah. because yeah. you you know you don't know how it's gonna rock out. Mm -hmm. So. When you create that passive income, you create, you, you're going to be able to create a lifestyle that you're going to be able to be making X amount of money to maintain, you know, your household, maintain your car, but you're also able to take time to go to your daughter's play, yeah. to take time to go to your son's baseball game on a Sunday, mm -hmm. to take time to, you know, do whatever. And I don't know if you guys experienced this, but I definitely did. I was so envious growing up. That I would look to the crowd and my mom was never there. My mom never had time to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and that's like, you know, and sometimes you see the guys that excelled at the game and were better were the guys that their dad was there with, with the Gatorade. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, there was and always that dad with the Gatorade. Yeah. And like, that's the goal that I want. 
few guys to mention, like, you no know, lie. Look, Velasquez, his father, Andrew, when we played with him, his father will have his bat there. He had a Gatorade ready. Let's go. Like, it, it does make a big difference. And that's something I'm going to work on as a father, myself now, that I'm trying to make sure that I'm in every chapter, every, every possible outlet that my daughter wants to be a part of. I want to be there. Exactly. It's, that, it's having that supportive background. For sure. And, you know, it comes with, that. that's what I call financial freedom. Yeah. That's the that's the that's what you call financial freedom when you're able to take that time off from making money and taking that time off and putting it into your family. But not also like you know sometimes people focus on just saying like my kids. Yeah. Sometimes you forget that you have a cousin that appreciates if you come to his event or comes to his shop or just comes and talks to him for twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. And you know we, we forget that you have an uncle that just wants to have a beer with you mm-hmm. and talk you know some stuff for an hour. Mm-hmm. And you know when you when you're able to have that flexibility with time, you're able to create more memories yes. that will last forever and create more moments. And that's way more important than money. Exactly. My definition of life is that we are a recollection of our memories, thoughts, and experiences that we go through. So. Just like Dario said, the more that you can put yourself in a position to have the important things and the actual best experiences, that's how you actually really fulfill life. Yeah, in my opinion, everybody has their own perspective. Mm-hmm. For me, it's the small things that matter, just, just like Dario just, said. Just put yourself in situations to, to win. Yeah. Like, you know, put yourself in situations to win and to compete, but also have gratitude for what's going on. Like, enjoy the moment. Live in the moment. Live in the moment. Yeah, like, yeah. So, yeah. that's, that's, that's what, like, one of my final advice. Like, you know, put yourself in the right situation. Take full advantage of it. Don't blame others if things don't go wrong. Like, if things do go wrong, don't blame others. You know, yeah, put your finger at yourself and see what is it that you're doing wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, we all have something to work on. We're not perfect, but there's always that step that you could be like, okay, I need to reflect on this, what happened here, what happened there. And you start breaking down what happened, and you start looking at yourself in the mirror, and you're like, okay, this won't happen. So, like, to a lot of you guys out there that are playing basketball, that are playing football, that are playing baseball, just just hold yourself accountable. Hold yourself accountable each and every single day in the sense that you look at yourself in the mirror, and you're like, okay, I can look back 10 years from now and be happy. Yeah. Because this is something that you're going to live with, you know, and mm-hmm. th- that th- for the rest of your life. And it doesn't come down to, you know, the success that you have on the field. Because sometimes you can put in all the work and things just might not play out it the happens. way it wants to. Happen. But you could look back and be like, it was I tried. It was worth yeah. it. And, and that's one of the biggest things that you get to an age that you re- start reflecting and you'll be like, damn, I didn't. I didn't even give it my, my, my 20, my yeah. 30%. Of course. And, and then you start getting regret, and that's where you do not want to be. Trust yeah. me, that's nobody wants to be. So I think, I think one of the biggest things, you know, since you said earlier about, like, putting yourself in a position to, to basically mold yourself and become a better person and, and, and you know, put yourself in a position where you're, where you're uh, you know, where you have that financial freedom, regardless of whatever number you have. Yeah. I think the biggest thing to that is having a plan. Yeah. So, Very you know, good. having, you know, a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a ten-year yeah. plan, writing these things down, you know, saying, okay, I want to buy a house in the next 24 months. What am I going to do on a month-to-month basis that's going to relate and translate into me buying that house in 24 months? Yeah. So a lot of people, they have all these aspirations, they have all these goals, they have all these dreams, but they're not writing them down. They're not following up on what they should be doing. They're not holding themselves accountable. Yeah. And it all starts with a pen and paper. Write some things down. Say, I want to do this. Write five, ten things that are going to help you get to that position yeah. or to that spot. And just execute. And that, that's what, so that's, that's, what you that's all it's about. That's what, that's what goal, goal planning is all about. Like, you know, you want, you want to tell yourself, like, hey, I want to lose 20 pounds, but... You got to write out a map. Like, how am I going to lose these 20 pounds? Mm-hmm. So it's like, first, start eating clean. Yep. Start eating better. Start eliminating the food that you've been eating. Second, going to the gym. And then just have, like, modest. Like, okay, I want to lose five pounds by small next goals, month. Small goals. And then you just and start then, and then, about and from there. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's actually exactly where I'm at right now. I actually, I was weighing in 
So, you know, we talked about that moment where you saw yourself in the mirror. Yeah. And you were like, man, like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got to make a change. Yeah. And, um, you know, everyone that knows me, that, that knew me growing up, I was always, like, really fit in the sense of, like, I was, like, skinny, but I was, yeah. like, ripped. Yeah. Like, I was, yeah. like, yeah. like, like yeah. six yeah. pack yeah. and this and that. So, <clears throat> what happened to me was, after I stopped playing ball, you know, I put on, like, a couple more pounds. Nothing too crazy, yeah. but it's just, it's somewhere I've never been. Yeah. yeah. So, it's not about like, oh no, you're good. It's just something yeah. that wasn't, it just didn't sit right with me. Yeah. So I actually weighed myself in Pierre's house yeah. on January 5th. Yeah. I was actually just in his house yeah. hanging out. I saw his scale and I was like, you weighed myself. And I weighed in at 234 pounds. Yeah. And that's more or less around the heaviest I've been. I'm like, yeah. I'm like 5'11 and three quarters with shoes on. I'm like six feet tall. <laughs> it's a sensitive topic for me. But yeah, the is. point is, I was two, 234 pounds. And I was like, mm, that's not a weight that's comfortable. Yeah. So I said, you know what? Very simple. Today, it was a Sunday. I said, yeah, tomorrow morning, morning, morning tomorrow morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut out all, I'm going to cut out things I know. This is having a plan. I'm going to cut out things that I know are affecting the fact that I'm 234 pounds right now. Yeah. Maybe I'm eating a little bit too much rice. Maybe I'm eating too much bread. Yeah. Maybe I'm drinking too many juices. And yeah. sugar. Sugar. sugar, sugar that's so good. Yeah, yeah. So I said, I'm going to cut out rice, bread, sugar. And that's, that's major key when you cut out the, it's the super not, macro, not, bro. Not, it's not, not even that. When you cut out the procrastination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you just do oh, it. That I went, just yeah. do it. I showed up to BJ's that Monday morning. I made like a three hundred dollars. <laughs> I went like I spent like three hundred dollars food shopping. All worth it. Yeah. I've meal, I've been meal prepping since, and I'm actually on day thirty two right now of my ninety day cutting phase. And I'm not following anyone's ninety day plan. Yeah. I'm following my own plan, yeah. and that's having a plan, which is what I'm talking about right now. I'm currently Where are you at? Where are you at right now? 30 and days right now, 32 days later, I'm down 17 pounds. Jeez. And I am 217 pounds right now. And then there's people that say they can't get results. And I've seen it firsthand, people. who's got foot in the And you're talking to a guy that doesn't have... I don't have a cook. I don't have I don't have someone to cook for me. I don't, I don't even have a gym membership. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I'm doing this based off... I'm working with what I got. Yeah. You got what I'm saying? That, that's what you got to do. That's but, all it is. But the it's biggest thing is that you took that initiative right away. <laughs> and I executed. Absolutely. Because that, that, that problem is that I'm going to start the gym Monday. True. I'm going to start the gym. And then it's Friday. Friday. Yeah. What's so special yeah. about Monday? There's always start, a start, start on a Saturday. Saturday. That it says, yesterday you said tomorrow. Exactly. That always gets to me. Really and you know what also gets to me? That's, what I, tell, that's what I tell people. The apartment you see today is the, and you want to think about is the apartment that a family saw yesterday mm -hmm. and is thinking about. Yeah. So you need to make that decision fast. And that's the little tip. Don't listen. Don't that's leave. Don't yeah, give leave what you can do today. Yeah, for tomorrow. tomorrow. It's just and that's, that's, what is, that's what it all comes down to. All right, people. So, um, we try to give you guys the uh, little conversation about life, real estate, everything else that you could possibly think of. Um, Thank you for listening to us and thank you for our calls today. Yep. Thank, thank, you, God, thank, thank you guys for having me. Thank, thank you guys for having me. Of course. Yeah. This guy dropped some valuable knowledge for us today, guys. Things that I hope you guys take advantage of and actually in, um, start putting into your daily life. Um, you got any last words for them, Felix? My, my, la my last word to you guys is um, just hold yourself accountable. Like David Goggins says, stay hard. <laughs> and um, just don't, don't look back. Don't look back at the negativity. Stay positive and just keep moving forward. Awesome. And for me, guys, think about this. All three of us, we all grew up with one dream, and it was to be baseball players. And now that didn't happen. And we move, we've moved on to other things in life. But we're giving you the plan. We're giving you the ideas. We're giving you that mental aspect of things you need to do to get where you want to be. So this goes to show you that yeah, you may not, you may have wanted to be a baseball player. You may have wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, a football player. It didn't work out. And that's cool. Write out the list. Get some dreams, some aspirations down there. And bang them up. Make it happen. Make it happen. 110%. And remember, guys, always be 110%. <laughs> yeah. Don't ever let weather the like a nice. Easy to feel your craft. Never let weather that.